Welcome to part two. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to create variables and how to understand the nesting process of a SAS file. Before starting, always remember to access your terminal to point to the folder that you're actually using and rewrite the usual SAS watch, your SCSS file, column, and your output.css file. As you can see here, I have a split view, so I can show you how every time I change something and I save, automatically it's gonna be reflected in my output.css. So let's get started. If you're not familiar with the term variable, you just have to think about it as a way to store information that you want to reuse throughout your entire file without redeclaring the same information. Let's get started by creating a variable. For example, at the top of my page, I want to create a variable with the symbol $primary-color. And I want this color to be red, F00. And here, because I am in my first class, the same declaration color with the same actual color, red, I can just reuse the variable primary color. Save it. And as you can see here, nothing changed in my output.css. I don't see the variable here, but just to show you, if I change the value of my variable, for example, to completely black, and I save it, here automatically is going to be refreshed with the same color. So now we have this variable called primary color that we can reuse whenever we want without any source of issue. The process of using variable is really useful for pretty much everything if you have a constant border width, for example, two pixels. And we have two different classes called border blue and we have this border color and we want to use blue and we have another class called border red and we want to use class border color red and if these two classes they have both the border width of two pixels but this one and this other one. Instead of repeating this code, I can copy paste this variable here and replace the two pixel value, save it. Let's take a look in the output.css. We have both two pixel. And if it happens that uh, through the process of creating this website of styling this CSS, I decided that my global variable of border width has to be three pixels instead of of two, I can just change the variable, save it, and automatically this editing is going to be reflected on border blue and border right every time I use the same variable. The other cool thing about SCSS is the nesting process. The nesting process is really useful to save a lot of string of codes. So for example, if I have the usual a link and I have my font family of sans serif, and then I have my color of my primary color. And then I have a usual, the hover state, focus state, visited state, color as blue. And if, for example, I have the same link, but with a class added, for example, link class, and I want that just in this case, I need a different color. For example, I want green, and then I want a different hover state, focus state, and visit state if I have also this class. I have to do pretty much this. I have to repeat a hover, a focus, a visited, and change this one to black, if I want black. So as you can see here, we have a lot of code repetition. It's usual, it's standard CSS, but it's not really clear and it's not like really optimized, especially if we have to change something. There's an absolutely better way to handle this indentation and it is with the nesting of SCSS. So let's start with the A lace. And let's copy paste the exact same class here, copy C. Let's comment 
this section. And now instead of rewriting the same thing, so restating the A with over focus and other thing, I can use the nesting option of SESS by inside, by writing inside the curly brackets, the symbol ampersand is gonna carry the parent element and I can attach to this parent element another statement. So for example, this A link and ampersand hover my color is blue and also I can apply and specify a class ampersand dot link class color green and because I have to specify again all these a dot link class hover focus and visit status I can use another nesting level inside the curly brackets of the ampersand dot link class and I can reuse the exact same statement here and if I save the SCSS we're gonna take a look here you will notice that everything has exactly the same statement as it was before with a standard CSS output but now we don't have to repeat every time link class so if I'm long in the process of creating my website and I decided this class doesn't have to be called link class anymore but has to be called another class I have to just change this and automatically all the arguments are gonna change automatically so thank you for checking this video and see you next lesson